The people of Pakistan and Afghanistan deserve to live in peace. Peace is what really matters. Then it can be through fencing or open borders. Let's have a look at both the concepts and how it can be implemented on the Pak-Afghan border, the most dangerous place on earth. Open borders can yield a number of global benefits of a more diffused nature that are experienced throughout the world. It can double the world GDP with a one-time boost of about 50 to 150 percent. The GDP gains will be felt most by the world's poorest and absolute poverty will reduce dramatically. As kinship and friendship networks spread across the world, this helps strengthen the ties between countries, leading to more trade and mutual gain with less war and hostility. Cutting-edge ideas developed in one part of the world spread rapidly to others. The kind of threat that Pakistan is facing is different from the threat that perhaps the European countries are facing, right? Uh, so we have world's most notorious terrorist organizations operating inside Afghanistan. We have TTP, we have Daesh, we have Jamaatul Ahrar, uh, and then many factions of Daesh, many supplementary groups of Daesh and TTP. Pakistan had open borders with Afghanistan for almost 70 years, even when they voted against Pakistan's admission to the United Nations in 1947 after the independence of Pakistan. While open borders have worked in certain areas, but for countries which are more developed. Instead of making peaceful relations with Pakistan, they made the Pak-Afghan border a route for smuggling and a hub of terrorism. Smuggling is a hard nut to crack, especially when it grows unchecked and spread its tentacles to all major towns and cities in Pakistan. This continued unabated since 1947. Nearly 70% of the total goods exported to Afghanistan under the Afghan transit trade are smuggled back to Pakistan through various points. We have a long porous border with Afghanistan. And in the last 17 years specifically, we have seen that a lot of uh, infiltration has been going on from the Afghanistan side. In the last year, more than 100 billion rupees worth of goods were smuggled back to Pakistan. Lack of control on the incessant flow of smuggled items, especially drugs and multinational cigarettes brands, through the porous Durand line from Afghanistan into Pakistan has caused an estimated 100 billion rupees lost to the national kitty over the last two years alone. Another threat from this porous border is the unchecked smuggling of drugs and tobacco. According to the United Nations, 40% of the opium produced in Afghanistan is used and smuggled via Pakistan, which is not only resulting in the loss of billions to the government, but also ruining our nation's youth. This does not stop here. Pakistan remained a serious victim of terrorism, precisely foreign-sponsored terrorism from Afghanistan. The Afghan state is not totally in control of the Afghan territory. And given the fact that the Afghan territory has been misused for terrorist activities, not only against Pakistan, but against the international community. More than 60,000 Pakistani civilians, security forces personnel and women and children have been killed in gun, bomb and suicide attacks. Besides, thousands of others have been seriously injured or handicapped and are unable to win bread for their children, which ultimately also created other social issues in society. The economy suffered $123.1 billion cost on account of the loss of lives and damage to the country's infrastructure. After all our sacrifices, what have we got? Accusations of nurturing the same Taliban that are killing our own citizens? Being accused of having safe havens for terrorist groups? We can no longer be silent about Pakistan's safe havens for terrorist organizations. After these allegations, continued insurgencies and huge economic loss, Pakistan has decided to impede illegal cross-border movement. To prevent insurgencies and drug smugglers slipping between the two countries, Pakistan has decided to fence the Pak-Afghan border. It gives a very clear signal to people in Afghanistan as well as to other terrorist organizations as well as international actors that this is not a no man's land. This is Pakistan's legal territory and this is a territory where the people's rights will be ensured and maintained and safeguarded by the state. Running on some of the most inhospitable rugged terrains, the fencing began on 27th of April 2017. 
The total planned Park Afghan border is 2,611 kilometers and is expected to be completed by the end of 2020. Till now, 643 kilometers fencing along the border, including 462 kilometers in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and 181 kilometers in Balochistan, has been completed. Total of 843 border posts were planned, of which 233 have been completed, while the construction of 140 posts is underway. Fencing is important, securing the area is important, and that is why this fencing is going on. I think both countries have to understand this, Afghanistan and Pakistan, because what we are doing it is because that we want to secure our people. The fence is a dual wire terrellis, 11 feet high from Pakistan's side and 13 feet high from the Afghan side, with a 6 feet gap between them, which is filled with razor wire. It is deck meshed with a state-of-the-art surveillance system, closed circuit television cameras, drone cameras and other gadgets for effective day and night monitoring of the border. The fencing, we believe, will allow people to feel safe, uh, feel, you know, allow people to um, to deal with their natural um, issues more, much more progressively. After fencing and close computerized monitoring system, around 1,900 Afghans had been arrested and deported, while 600 Pakistanis were also stopped from entering Afghanistan. There are families, half of the families in the on the Pakistani side, or half of the family is on the other side of the border. They can meet, but as it is the norm in the whole world that you need to have a pass at least, visa perhaps, uh, that you can move from, uh, you know, freely across the border. It just, it just needs to be documented. We should just know who is coming in and who is going out. However, as a goodwill gesture, emergency patients were allowed to enter Pakistan for treatment without documents. Moreover, special cards have been issued to around 200 Afghan students who come to Pakistan in a school near the Torkham border in morning and then move back to their homes in the afternoon every day. Technically, the Afghan government should have supported Pakistan on this because it is about border management and border management is the right of every state which maintains control. Cross-border infiltration, illegal trade and smuggling are becoming impossible now. So looking at the past, looking at the what Pakistan has been through, I think it's at the moment it's a good decision to make it more documented, make the movement, uh, document the movement, make people secure. Armed forces have not only been able to cleanse the society of the menace of terrorism to a great extent, but have also broken the myth that fencing at the 2,611 kilometer long and zigzag path of an border is unmanageable. Border management is something which is, so long as nation state exists, uh, borders will be managed. Otherwise, we would require no visas and no states. Uh, till we have a world free of states, unfortunately or fortunately, this will be the permanent mechanism of order. It is hoped that after its completion, the project will benefit the peace-loving people of Pakistan and Afghanistan. The Park Afghan border fencing is a reality and it has changed the paradigm of illegal border crossing.